Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And it's great to have you with us. We've got a very interesting topic to share with you. Um, and this is a combination effort between HKS and Loban Partners. Um, and in pulling together this presentation, we definitely need to give a big thank you to both Daphne, who works with me at HKS, and Sergio, who works with Tim at Loban Partners. Um, and so that you can see more of the screen, they will be around, but they're gonna close down their videos so that you can see more of the screen real estate, as they call it. Now, the topic we're looking at today is called Invoking a Sense of Place in Resort Development and Golf Course Design, which is an interesting one and probably a slightly unusual one. Um, but before we get into it, let's just tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. First up, the companies that we uh, represent, uh, HKS Hospitality Advisory, um, and we provide people with advice about what is your project? Is there a market for it? And will it stack up? Very early end sort of concept advisory development, which then hopefully feeds into design and whether that's a building or whether that's a facility, it depends on the project. But if it does have a golf course, then of course you need a golf course architect. Tim. Thank you very much, Ben, and absolutely thrilled to be presenting with you today. Um, our firm, Lob & Partners, is a dedicated golf course design firm and we're based in London, um, Spain, and Canada. Uh, we work on new courses and new resorts, as well as refurbishing existing golf courses. Perfect. And then just by way of example, um, well, there we are, and some of our projects. Um, for us, um, a few big names and some few quirky ones in there too. One of my favorites that's gaining recognition all the time right now is Lofoten and Lynx in Norway, a beautiful opportunity to play golf under the Northern Lights, um, a stunning, interesting story in its own account, um, but we'll not go into that today. I'll save that for another day. But Tim and I first came across each other working on the Soma Bay project um, in Egypt, and that was uh, a decade ago or so. And then Tim, some of your projects there. Yeah, so I've got a, a sort of a timeline of, of some of my projects there. I started in uh, in Malaysia with uh, ENG Parslow, which is the top left, um, working through some courses uh, in Asia. Then I joined European Golf Design and did uh, <clears throat> a nice course in Finland called Lina Golf. And then moving on from that, we we formed a, a um, partnership with Peter Thompson. <clears throat> and designed Karia Golf Club in, in Turkey, which is a, a great resort development, worked on uh, uh, St. George's Hill. And then uh, we have uh, some desert courses uh, in Egypt and then recently working in Canada and also in Spain. So uh, quite a varied uh, geographical and uh, project type listing. Perfect. And then in terms of our, uh, our offices and our representation, HKS has been around since the uh, 1930s, um, and we have 29 offices around the globe. Um, I'm based there in the middle in London, um, and then we have offices going as far as Shanghai and Singapore, and then many offices in the States. Tim? Thank you very much, Ben. I think I mentioned it before, sorry. Uh, we, we, um, I am based in just out of London, and then uh, Sergio is based in Spain, and we have uh, another office in Whistler, Canada, concentrating on, uh, on North America. We've had a good um, geographic reach uh, with our projects and also a diverse mix of project types. So it's been a, it's been a fun journey for sure over the last- and I think one of the advantages with this, of course, is that uh, tackling different types of climate and geography is something that we're used to on the day-to-day. -day. But let's get to the subject in hand. Um, and this is where we're gonna be thinking what is a sense of place and therefore as for the back of that how does that impact our thinking about design um but to kick us off tim is going to tell us a little bit about this one yeah i think the history of this one um is quite nice i mean we invited ben to come and speak at our european institute of golf course architects conference in april and it was really this image that, that got me thinking about um, what is a sense of place and how would we create that in a golf course setting. So Ben came and presented in Turkey at our EIGCA conference. Um, and then uh, it really it really um, invoked the, the idea of doing something together. 
but this I think this image is captures really the essence of what we're talking about where um Goodwill Hunting a great movie uh hopefully you've all seen it but um you know uh Matt Damon who plays a character who's a very intelligent person uh well read and and obviously knew all the facts of of the Sistine Chapel and the architecture and 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 all those type of things but Robin Williams asks him the question do you know what it smells like in in the Sistine Chapel and that really sort of envelops the the idea of a sense of place it's not just a physical being but it's a whole emotional um uh, attraction and the whole emotional awareness of that site and that's what we want to dig deep into today so just this image really got got our brain thinking and particularly got my brain thinking a lot too so it's this link up between memory emotion and then physical location and as we get into the topic just off the back of uh, what Tim was saying this was a presentation that I was sharing at the time and we covered 23 key trends associated with uh, the travel and tourism sector right now. Um, and they're beginning to impact us in many different ways in terms of development. But of these trends, there's probably three that are most relevant. Um, and we're going to focus on for the purposes of this conversation today. Um, and um, let's take it step at a time. The first one is authenticity. And just with regard to authenticity, there's many destinations that feel a little bit bow um, but what we're looking for now apparently as a market is more opportunity to get to destinations that have something very real about them whether it's an adventure in nature whether it's a totally immersive Cappadocia kind of experience or whether it's culture and tradition something which is anchored in its local context and off the back of that there are really three aspects to it somewhere which gives you an authentic experience um, because these days it's not so much about um, just relaxing and not doing anything there will be always be people who want to go and sit on the sun lounger but many of us now are looking to actively do something which creates a memory a memory that we can take with us for a lifetime and memories and experiences are very closely tied to emotion and what is the emotion you get from the activity you undertake is it a sense of a beautiful, wonderful meal, which is a meal that you're going to remember. Is it a case that it was a meal with a lovely group of friends? Was it the location? Was it the setting? Um, what were you feeling at the time? That's the key part to this. And then that then feeds into those emotions that you take with you going forward, whether it was a cozy spot. Um, and of course, then we start thinking about how that starts to react to the world of golf which is going to be an interesting challenge but before we get into that let me just talk to you a little bit about the trends and how the trends take the lead there are three trends as i mentioned and one of them is to do with what we're calling alpha beta and gamma and simply put post pandemic there's a there's a realization that alpha destinations <clears throat> which include places of course such as london or paris or you know, or Machu Picchu, which is, you, you know, back in the day, got 2,500 visitors a day. The Alpha destinations are certainly coming back and people will want to start traveling to them or Santorini, for example. And then there's a bunch of beta destinations, which are slightly less well known, but are starting to see a bit of a rise and return in terms of their demand. So Lofoten up in Norway or possibly Jabal Shams in Oman up there with a, their own version of the Grand Canyon. Or maybe it's one of those fantastic Greek destinations. But the new bit here <clears throat> is an interest in what you might call a gamma destination. And these are those places that weren't necessarily on your radar before. A little bit unusual, a little bit quirky, possibly slightly hard to get to, but somewhere that's memorable. <clears throat> so, for example, getting to, to Yemen isn't particularly easy it might be either a backpack destination or a private jet destination but ultimately there will be more interest in it over time and there are a bunch of other places too whether that's somewhere that's slightly off the beaten track in Greece for example but it also applies of course with the world of golf so Tim what are you seeing with regard to this in golf I think this is a great uh, correlation to uh, the, the, the golfing traveler now and the golfing tourists, which is really a big, big market. 
and and we need to ensure that we we develop the right facilities for for each of these markets but we talk about the alpha market uh you know obviously destinations like saint andrews uh will be a, a spot that everyone will go to the beta as as ben said slightly harder to get to but um people might take an extra day to travel to get to it we've got banff banff springs here in canada which i think is a lifetime memory if you ever get to play there and then the gamma i mean we've got lofton links here because uh golfers are um you know exploring new territories and i think from our perspective uh you know definitely if if we can find the sites the spectacular sites history has shown that people will travel i mean we have developments in america as well we have bandon dunes and uh uh you know some of the other re more remote um developments that have happened but history has shown that uh the golfers will travel to these destinations to to make sure that they enjoy this once in a lifetime opportunity so um the the you know the alphas are always going to be there especially if you're close to a a major city or a major airport um the 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 betas uh are growing of course and then the the gammas are are happening more and more and as ben says people's sense of adventure is is growing and um and and people will go for leisure in more uh what was known as way out places but also people will go play golf in more way out places if the golfing experience is good enough the second trend that we're going to pick up on is a trend of people giving an increased interest and focus on authentic and indigenous experiences and destinations and of course when we're thinking about that we're thinking about destinations where there's some sensitivity um, and ESG gets talked about a lot and of course it's to do with uh, with the environment and protecting the environment and sometimes it could be a slightly more sensitive environment just by way of context here the indigenous communities of the world represent about five percent of the global population but in terms of their influence they also represent about 80 percent of global biodiversity um, and when we think about that we're thinking about the environment taking care of the environment but also in terms of social care and this is where we start thinking about the communities get involved in their own running of their own businesses and their own trends in fact there's now such a strong focus on that that we have um, companies now who are providing a facility where they're able to zoom in and actually understand the pros of the of the ripple effect that's happening and and this is the article that's um focused here with Bruce Poon Tip who's providing that thing about uh, how far does it trickle down to the local community um and so what we're talking about is local experiences owned by local communities um and of course how does that then fit into the world of golf thanks Ben um I think uh, it's a good lead into to really what we are trying to achieve and I, I guess when we when we go onto a site for the first time we're really trying to understand the the DNA of that site and and to really celebrate that through the design we've got a few examples here of of how um uh you know golf courses are really investing in their community this is a great course in Vietnam um uh, out near uh, Da Nang area and we can see from this on from the image uh you know the integration of the sorry Ben <laughs> we can see you know the integration of the local farming community and uh you know that 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 um, uh, interpretation into the golf course, which is really exciting. Uh, next project is is one that we we worked on in Bodrum, and it was an existing olive farm, and and we were really keen and 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 really determined to to keep the the olive farm and the olive grove as part of the local community, but also integrate it within the golf course and you know really investing in the community and the you know the 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 olive oil is so, is sold within the within the club facilities that's really exciting and this is uh this is a, a, another one that that was that was brought up in in Canada and uh this this land um you know was once a uh part of but well it is still part of the first nations land uh with a, with a slightly um uh, negative background and, and negative history to it but it was transformed into a golf resort and and 
and and you know owned by the local community the first nations and and really turned into a positive for what once was a, a very sad um, history for that piece of land, but has been redeveloped into a very positive history and very positive future. Now, we started off talking about a sense of place and the importance of emotion in sense of place. And I think there's a, there's a realization that actually, if we can be thinking about um, design and understanding the value of emotion in design, it might actually start to impact the way we think about the buildings and structures and the activities and amenities that we bring to a project. Um, and so this is just a, this is a copy of the Junto wheel. I think there's 108 different types of emotions in there. Um, and these are the things which trigger really help to trigger memories as we go through. Um, so, for example, some of those memories are you might be going to a destination which feels peaceful uh, or maybe it's uh, a setting where um, it, it's just sentimental. It's a romantic view. It creates some sort of affectionate response or else it's somewhere where it's actually a, a little bit threatening or dangerous. It's, it's that type of experience where you're a bit nervous associated with it. Um, it's interesting that many of our childhood memories, and maybe it's a time when you went away camping and your tent blew away when you were on holiday with your parents, is one of those things that it might have been a bit of a challenging moment, but you definitely take it with you as part of your experience. And sometimes it's realizing the importance of surprise, that a moment when you open the door or you turn a corner and there's something stunning there which amazes you and you're Draw, your jaw hits the ground, you're almost overcome, you're maybe perplexed, you're maybe speechless. How can you design that into something? So what we're talking about here is trying to think about design where we might be touched, we, we might be scared, it might be jovial, it might be stimulated. And one of the questions, and this is something that Tim really latched onto in a fascinating way, is how might that be applied in the world of golf. Tim. Thank you very much. Um, ben introduced a Junto wheel to us all in Turkey, which was quite a revelation to us all. And as Ben said, we started to think about how how do we how do we design in emotion to our golf course experience? So, you know, when we when we think of the first hole and the start of this golfing journey, how would we create, first of all, the sense of surprise, the sense of arrival to the to the hole, but also maybe a little bit of fear to to really uh, awaken the senses of uh, of your emotion when you're about to start the game of golf. So, you know, the start and finish hole are, are going to be very strong memories of, of how you're going to remember that golfing experience. And then, you know, when we're designing golf courses, we also want to create a lot of strategic routing, which means we want to offer a lot of different ways on how the golf hole can be played. So again, playing on your emotions. We've got Anger and love. This is one of the most famous golf holes in golf. This is Woking, number four, uh, where the central bunkers are, are positioned. So you can play this hole in, you know, either short of the bunkers, left of the bunkers, right of the bunkers, or over the bunkers. So there's a lot of feeling or a lot of uh, apprehension. Could be anger if you hit in the bunker, or love if you play the strategy correctly. So again, through clever design, we can manipulate the way. We want people to have an emotional reaction, but that emotional reaction will last, will, will create memories, we hope. Highs and lows. This is an absolute classic example here. This is a TPC Sawgrass, uh, where we have uh, sadness and joy, um, potentially in, in within a couple of seconds of each other. Uh, we have the, the 16th hole there where uh, it's a par five where a lot of people birdie and uh, and we'll have the joy. And what's interesting is that uh, Pete Dye, who designed this course, and, uh, um, you know, he created this walkway which uh, walks right next to the lake. So you're starting to get a bit of anxiety playing the famous 17th hole. And then when we get to 17, such a penal design uh I think sadness or joy is a fairly um, finite result. Either you're on the green and you're very joyful or you're off and you're sad. So just playing on that range of emotion through the design intricacies can really uh, play a great role in, in, in golf course design and, and memorability of a golf 
golf course and golf destination. And presumably that's one of those things why people will come back and play the same course again and again, because it depends on the weather, depends on who you're with, depends on how you hit the ball. That that moment when you think you've, it, it's, it was a beautiful hit and somehow, somehow, just somehow, it managed to go into the one and only bunker that existed the whole length of that particular hole. And so you had that moment of joy when you hit it, and then that moment of absolute frustration and anger and whatever they would it and but it's going to be different every time and that's one of the interesting things and, and thinking about how that can be designed in so sense of place was our theme for this presentation and we've talked about emerging destinations and what they provide for us and then the idea that we want something which is authentic and indigenous and true to the location and then finally and specifically this piece about um designing in emotion and how that might actually be uh, actioned right from the drawing board these days in terms of golf design. Tim, do you want to take us home with regard to that? Any final thoughts? Yeah, I think I think you've, we're really, it's been exciting to work on this together with with uh, with yourselves and HKS and, and really uh, trying to trying to work out how how we can um, enhance the emotional reaction through our design. And and it's just the the importance of the whole experience, uh, which which I hope we've we've brought through um, in this presentation. And for sure, it's one of those things where, in a big master plan scheme, you might want to set aside whatever it is, sixty five, eighty hectares, or whatever, for your golf. But actually, realizing that there may be much more to it in terms of the design and the philosophy and the thinking and the concept and who it's designed for and even now what kind of emotions you might want to bring to bear on the project that's really the exciting thing here and so i'm i'm sure certainly both of us we would love to hear from you um, if you have a particular scheme where you think maybe rather than just do something average let's do something that really sticks out and separates it as an exceptional experience that helps to create emotion, gives people a remarkable experience and therefore a great memory. Please do get in touch with us. Um, we would love to hear from you. Our details are there and uh, we would welcome some feedback and any questions that you might have. Thank you very much.